Good evening, everybody. Good evening from Perth. Obviously, good afternoon from London because our guest today is based in London. And good morning in North America for our community in North America. Welcome to the Greatness Engineering Hour show. My name is Mireille, Mireille Tilekima, and I'm known as the Greatness Engineer. And as usual, I'm your host today. So, uh, for those who don't know me, I'm the uh, founder of the Murray Tulekima Global Leadership Organization, the organization uh, sponsoring the show. And at the Murray Tulekima Global Leadership Organization, we empower individuals and inspire them to define their success and their destiny in their own term and help them to become the best that they can be. So we provide them with um, sustainable approach that uh, help them to create, you know, an active leadership and uh, and make a difference really in in uh, in the life of people around them, and uh, and and really you know create a positive impact in the world. And we've carried this philosophy uh, and mission here on the Greatness Engineering Hour show by featuring uh, guests with inspiring stories of triumph and those guests, we expect those guests to, to share uh, some tremendous learning or um, knowledge, specialized knowledge to help our audience to be confident and to take action, massive action and really step into their power and to, into their greatness. So today we have an inspiring woman with us she, I would say that she's the embodiment of diversity, and you, you know why later on. Her name is Lara Kalaf, and Lara is based in London, and today she's going to be with us, uh, and I think we're going to focus a lot of our conversation on women empowerment because she's an expert and a specialist in, uh, in women empowerment. So I'm going to just uh, introduce Laura, Lara, for um, you know just quickly, and she'll get the opportunity to introduce herself later on. Uh, so, um, Lara was born in Syria, and she was raised in Spain, and she currently lives in London. So now you see the diversity that I was talking about. She's a multi-award-winning woman development and leadership specialist with more than 20 years of international experience in progressive leadership. So she's going to explain later on to us what progressive leadership is all about. So she's worked in progressive leadership role and managed large team uh, operation in private, corporate, and public sector. And a woman, she has a woman empowerment firm uh, that focuses on developing and transforming women leadership, both personal, and with team in a conscious and confident and feminine way because that's 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 the key feminine way and she's uh, she's also the co-founder of women 5.0 among yes. all the accomplishments she is a not a non-executive director for two startups uh, she de she delivered a ted a tedx talk and she has featured in a documentary about inspirational woman for PBC TV, and it's going to be released pretty soon. And she speaks internationally on the topic of woman leadership. And the part that I, I like is that she loves her pets, reading, traveling, street art, collecting Barbie dolls, and healing crystal. So, Lara, welcome to the Greatness Engineering Hours. Sure, I'm just so excited to have you today and uh, you know and thanks for making the time to spend an hour with us and with me and my audience. Uh, I know it's going to be an inspiring hour and I'm really looking forward to it. So Laura, I'm going to let you introduce yourself in a bit more detail and uh, we really want to know everything about you, how you came to do what you do, how you started. We really want to know it all. Uh, today. The floor is yours. 
Thank you, thank you, Mireille. Thank you so much, and it's it's my joy and pleasure to be here with the, with the, with all of you and with the, your lovely audience. So, thank you so much for for the intro. You know, I was getting excited. It's like, can she repeat it again? <laughs> <laughs> repeat it, repeat it. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, thank you so much. Yes, indeed. And um, yes, I was born in Syria. And at the age of 14, 15, my parents decided to, to move to Madrid. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that was um, that was uh, a great decision, mm -hmm. especially with uh, with everything that's happening now. Um, I would say that that was uh, yeah a great mm -hmm. decision. Definitely. And my mother was born in Spain, so we've um, had that opportunity or that uh, flexibility to go there. And uh, and I started my my career in, in in leadership or imagine businesses at the age of sixteen, mm -hmm. and that's because I think my parents um, thought that I was uh, I was a shy person, and so I was labelled most of my life, you know, Lara the shy, 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 shy. Ooh. And um, it doesn't and, look uh, like now. <laughs> Is it right? Okay, okay. Let's get started right into it. And and that is the power of labels, right? So mm -hmm. so what happens with labels is that when somebody gives you gives you that label, you believe it, and mm -hmm. you start showing up showing up like that until I realized further down uh, my career when I started developing myself and, and taking my growth seriously that that wasn't true. That, mm -hmm. that was somebody's opinion on uh, on how I was showing up in the world. That that was a shyness at all. Ah, okay. So, yeah, and, and uh, so I was working. Yeah, sorry, Mireille. No, just go ahead. Just uh, oh, okay. Ahead. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> And uh, so I started working in my dad's business uh, during my school holidays and and summertime to. Um, get over the shyness and become more confident and and that's how i started my my my, my career and mm -hmm. i was very grateful for my dad for becoming my first mentor and and from then you know after studying uh, my career finishing my degree i uh, came up with a genius idea that it's time for me to learn english language and that's because i had one of my jobs while i was at university i was a pr and i had to deal with uh, mm -hmm. a lot of um, uh, international guests uh, mm -hmm. was a you know a music program tv program and one of the the, the you know because i spoke all the languages so they would automatically put me with the international uh, artists and i could i couldn't speak english i mean i just could not i, I didn't know the language mm -hmm. so i thought it would be a good opportunity to come to the uk learn the language stay for a few months and then go back to um to spain to to take care of, of the family business Mm -hmm. And uh, so when I came to the UK approximately 14 years ago, I uh, didn't know anybody. I, um, I had very little funds that I was saving up when I was at university. And my challenge, my biggest challenge is that I didn't speak the language. So mm -hmm. it was very interesting times back then. And I'm very grateful for all those experiences, early experiences, where I was working in a fish and chip restaurants, I was working in, in hospitality, in hotels, um, just whatever job I was getting, I'll just embrace it with, you know, with so much gratitude, uh, mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, I felt that it was my responsibility to, to, make, it, to, to make it happen and make it a success. Especially after um, being a decision of my own and mm -hmm. coming, coming from an Arab background, um, it's um, I'm very lucky that my parents both are very progressive and very open-minded and very um, call it modern. <laughs> um, <laughs> as a modern, because I don't know what that really means, you know. But yeah, 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 yeah. I, I understand. I understand. It basically, yeah, yeah. open-minded and then really, open you know, yeah, open-minded and, and uh, not, yeah. you know. Uh, so, so I mean, and and that's that's the thing is that all every single experience is uh, is a growth, you know. It helps you to grow. It helps you to get your to get confident, and uh, and that's why you know it, it's always good to have you know different experiences. I myself, you know, had those different experiences. Uh, you know, got challenged to learn different languages, and you know working in, in a male dominated environment. So it's 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 hard when, when you think about it. But then you know as you grow you realize wow that's fantastic that I, I could actually have this opportunity. And i and I don't know if it's the same for you uh, yeah. probably. So but going through all of this, all those experiences, what do you think has been the hardest, you know, um, for you to manage? Because Obviously, you know, there's uh, you change country, uh, 
uh, you basically had to learn the language and then there's the cultural part of things as well which is uh, we can which is a challenge I mean like you said for a, a woman of Arabic background how did you navigate all of this how did, yeah. that was the process and the rhetoric that you were you know having at that time yeah. because I can imagine how you know hard it was Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mary, for this question. Such a beautiful question. I think for me were two things. The first one is love. I was, um, I know now, knowing what I know and how I experienced life, that was love that was driving me to show up in the way that I was showing up, but also the sense, a big sense of responsibility. You mm -hmm. know, my parents had, had left Syria to come to, to Spain and create a new lifestyle for us there. And, um, and you know, when, when um, at least something that I've learned throughout the, the, you know, the years is that, you know, who we are very much based on what other people think of me, what I do, what I have, or what job I have, mm -hmm. and all these external influences um, then it makes me who I am, right? But it's, it's that it's completely nonsense, right? Because mm -hmm. it's, I don't have any power in this, what other people opinion mm -hmm. of me. Yeah. So I had an, obs so call it an obsession, uh, but a healthy obsession to make my family feel proud, you know, especially after everything that I've done for us and my siblings. Mm -hmm. So I felt that my, was my job to, to, to make it happen. Now, um, it was very interesting that only a few days ago, I was um, focused, I was reflecting on the concept of confidence because mm -hmm. it, it seems to be one of the main reasons as to why women want to work together with myself. And I realized that back then, I didn't understand the term confidence. In fact, it wasn't until my mid-20s that people started talking about confidence around me. I'm like, but what is that? You know, <laughs> and what, is, what does that mean? And I remember that, when I was 18, my first uh, public speaking, mm -hmm. uh, I had to present at university one, uh, a piece of research in front of all my colleagues and, and professors. And, and my research was, in fact, uh, about the situation of women in the Middle East. So that mm -hmm. is how back, you know, my, my interest in, in women's development and the situation of women, uh, you know, was, uh, was dating. And I remember that I was nervous. I was nervous because I didn't do that before. Mm -hmm. So once I got over that and once I devoured all the books because back then I didn't have Google to, to mm -hmm. go um, and search. So I spent hours in the, in the library reading and reading and reading. So that is when, you know, I did it and this is it. I did it. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and that once made me think that, that the concept of confidence is, um, is a construct and is completely learned. Mm -hmm. At least the way I see it and how the way I, I when, when I deal with my women and my ladies, you know, it's, we challenge, I challenge the concept of, of what they think confidence is all about. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was, let me go for it. When yeah. I came to the UK, I just, I knew that, um, I, I, I had to learn certain skills. I needed to learn the language because, you know, I just didn't have that. Mm -hmm. So I learned it and I, I got on with it. Mm -hmm. And I remember not long time ago, uh, maybe about a couple of years ago, maybe a little bit more, that somebody asked me, Lara, it must have been so challenging for you being a woman and, you know, being from a different country. And it must have been difficult for you to, you know, mm -hmm. to make happen whatever I made happen in the UK. And my response to that was actually, I didn't realize. <laughs> I didn't notice <laughs> because that was not part of, of, you know, not because I'm a woman, you know, it's, 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 uh, uh, it's going to be challenging for me. I, I it just, it wasn't my awareness, you know, to look at things that way. And, and may I say that, thank goodness that that was the case. Um, Having said that, that doesn't mean that then I, I didn't experience certain mm -hmm. situations where because I was a woman and, uh, you know, some, some really dark moments uh, that, that I attributed to that. But that came, you know, uh, different stages of my life, but not mm -hmm. because I felt that uh, because I was a woman or I, you know, I was not from the UK that, that, mm -hmm. was, that would be a handicap for me. In fact, I never felt it that way. And, and, and that's amazing that you, you say that sometimes we think too much, you know, when we, we face with a certain situation or when we want to make a decision, a decision. we think too much. And, and the simple way is actually just do it. And then, you know, get, get to, to have the experience. Uh, it can be bad or good, but if it's bad, you readjust. If it's good, good luck. But, uh, and especially women, we tend to really, you know, regurgitate in our mind, uh, 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 trying to have the perfect, you know, 
perfect setting, perfect situation when we know that it doesn't exist. And, you know, which leads to my, my next question is that, you know, as part of your empowerment work, um, first of all, what is empowerment for you? I mean, woman empowerment for you. For you. And as part of your empowerment work, what do you think has been the key challenge, challenges for women? Yes. Okay. So, so uh, I love this question too. Mm -hmm. I think I think that that uh, women's empowerment for me, um, it's the it, it, it's imp the power that I have within me. So let mm -hmm. me, I'm going to use the word conquer. So let me conquer my own world and let me show up from that place of of uh, of, of, of from that power. Mm -hmm. I really truly believe, Mireille, that that one of the challenges, not only of women, but, you know, with men, to, with the humankind altogether, mm -hmm. it's it's the all the wounds and all the unhealing situations that we've had that we're showing up in the in the world from that space and and um and some people you know have had some really interesting conversation with men mm -hmm. that they said that my work is discriminatory that that you know etc uh, etc et and and that's fine that's their opinion mm -hmm. but what i've seen and i have witnessed over and over again is the energy and the beauty and the magic that gets created when women get together mm -hmm. and we don't go out there saying we hate men no 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 we don't go out there saying we're gonna burn our bras no 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 mm -hmm. we talk about how can we heal ourselves mm -hmm. as a about asking ourselves some really powerful questions because I think that an unhealed woman is a disempowered woman and I and, and my speciality is people leadership and that is something that I've done for many years of my life and as if I as an unhealed woman I show up like this to lead a team and lead a business I mean, what kind of impact am I making as well in those individuals that are looking up to me as their leader, right? Mm -hmm. So this is what I think and I mean by women's empowerment is about is accessing the power that I have with, within myself mm -hmm. and heal whatever needs to be healed within me so I could show up from, from, from that space and, and keep refining, refining and learning and learning because once we are on this beautiful, stunning, magical um, road of self-development and growth and it's, it's so it's never ending to it. yeah mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. what was your second question again the second Just question wanted... was to know i mean what are the key challenges you know working with women what what do you think are the key challenges that you see that those women had you know and uh, yeah. are really difficult to heal you know yeah 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 okay so um first i think that we are going through stunning time where um People get excited about having women's circles and having women's programs mm -hmm. and having women's gathering. And, and I think a lot of people who are ready for that are looking for it. And hence, you know, how it's, how it's growing within, within you know, uh, uh, even in places like, like the Middle East, or even in places like um, in, um, in Iran, there, there mm -hmm. are movements as well to um, and i'm talking about you know those places as, as more traditional that yes. never, we never expected mm -hmm. to to have um uh, you know uh, women, women voices, showing yeah. up mm -hmm. like women voices that's exactly thank mm -hmm. you so much for your, your help there so i think some of the challenges that women are, are having i i i pinpoint all of them they're all going toward the same direction for me it doesn't really matter what level they when i say mm -hmm. level level of growth level of business level of responsibility that's what i mean by that level of awareness and i think that all of them we all have and i say all and i include myself at certain level mm -hmm. it's um, because i still continue to work on it it's um, unconditional love towards ourselves mm -hmm. that everything to me it's, it's point towards that it's um yeah, yeah. I mean, they w w some sometimes discovered through confidence, sometimes it's covered through leadership, sometimes mm -hmm. it's covered, uh, you know, covered with, with you know, different words that we give it. Um, but I think it's it's all um, it's it goes there. It's that uh, awareness that we have of ourselves and that mm -hmm. um, love that we have towards ourselves. And I'm not talking here about manicures, pedicures, or anything like that. I'm talking about some really high level. It's part of it, actually. <laughs> oh, I get, hey, hey, you know, we love our flowers, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's good. And, and I love it because, you know, uh, 
it's it's just you know again a reminder that we are we are on the driving seat we are you know we are driving everything so we shouldn't look outside we should always look in, you know inside and try to appreciate what we have and love ourselves and then that's this reflection that we, we, we give to the world. Because we always do it the other way around. We try to have the approval from everybody. And then if this approval is not coming, we are very you know, miserable and uh, completely, you know, we lose our confidence. And it's always good to remind us that uh, you know, we create that and we have to love ourselves, we have to be confident and, uh, and, and, and really work like that. Uh, I saw that you know you you said that you are uh, you work with uh, you have a new venture called Woman Five Five What what is it all about? Is it about? I'm sorry to say that again. I didn't hear you. I just wanted to know a little bit more about your venture called the Woman Five Point Yes, oh, of course, of course. Oh, yes. so stunning, so stunning. So this is, um, I met uh, my co-business partners, soul sisters, mm -hmm. and, uh, and we were part of the same project uh, um, a couple of years ago, and that's how mm -hmm. we met. And, um, and we connected, we connected at such a beautiful level that, may I say that I've never connected to two women like that. Um, and uh, the three of us are, we love working with women all of us all the three of us have have got the, our own thing going on so we um one of them a lady called Gemma, um uh, she had already the concept of women 5.0 mm -hmm. and um and then she very generously decided to uh to say you know let's do it together so it feels right to do it together and that's how we joined her in this beautiful concept so women 5.0 the 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 vision of it is all about elevating consciousness mm -hmm. and we do that through each of us specialize in one concept Gemma spe specializes in in peace I specialize in beauty and how to create um, inner beauty and, and outer beauty mm -hmm. and and how to connect to beauty and then um, our soul sister Linda the third one um, she specializes in um, in the concept of possibility mm -hmm. and how to see possibilities and creating possibilities wherever we, we are so through peace uh, beauty and possibility we create uh, we aim to raise consci consciousness in the world and this is how we we do it still in its infant stages we're very very excited of um, of what woman 5.0 could do in the world we've already mm -hmm. done some events and we do our work with our ladies from that perspective we have uh, you know a group of ladies that um, mm -hmm. are part of the the venture and we're growing we're growing with it um, and mm -hmm. we're very excited it's very exciting so it's it's a lot you know what what i see is that uh, it, it actually you know focus on uh, fem the feminine part of uh, feminine uh, aspect of women and, yes. and and it's good because that's something that tend to be you know especially and, and that's sometimes the problem that women have is like do they really capitalize on uh, the their feminine part or their womanhood like I, I call it or do they try to be more neutral and you know blend into a society that actually want them to be less uh, as a less feminine than they, they should be. But it looks like, you know, we, we're going now more towards um, a world where femininity is actually becoming really a, a big a strength. And, uh, and and we really need to, to focus on that. Yeah. And, you, you know, yes. I mean, you, you, you going through all those experiences and uh, you, I mean, you, you are a global, you know, agent. What is success for you? Because it, it must be, uh, because you, you're dealing with different cultures, different genders, and different kind of problems. Uh, how, you know, at which point do you decide, this is, this is it, uh, that's my success, I want to, you know, that's the way I see success. And how do, how do you, what is success for you? I um, um, before we do that, you know, 
we were talking earlier on about femininity mm-hmm. and, and I think that, that I think it would be interesting to, to just clarify a little bit that mm-hmm. we need to, to each of us um, define what femininity means to us. Mm-hmm. So, um, and that, that, that is important, right? But, and, and, but I really truly believe that we need to bring more of the feminine energy to, mm-hmm. to, um, to working spaces, to corporates, to, we, we're missing that. And, mm-hmm. and I think that um, rather than talking about gender equality, I think we also need to start talking about energy equality mm-hmm. so it's not just about having women in boardrooms but bringing the feminine energy into into the boardroom mm-hmm. now going to the question about success i for me success it's do you know i'm 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 i like to show up and and i just talk for you know coming with com- what comes to my heart mm-hmm. and i am disconnected with the word success because i, I see know. success yeah i'm disconnected with that and the reason being is because uh, what is success? Is it depending on, on, on what, right? So mm-hmm. uh, I mean, I, for me, if I have an obsession, let's say, or if I have a goal, it's for me to heal whatever that needs to be healed and to keep waking up and waking up and waking up. So for me, it's a success as such. And I'm going to follow here a mantra of one of my favorite teachers called Barbara DeAngelis. And one of her mm-hmm. mantras is, um, it's, for, for me to see what there is to see, to feel what there is to feel, and to know what there is to know. So if I am in a situation in which um, I am being triggered, or somebody has done something, or you know is not going according to how I expected it, or for example, some of the challenges I'm currently going through, you know, a family situation that is related to health, so for me, it's about saying, what do I need to see in this situation? Mm-hmm. And whenever I am seeing things that, it, you know, it's almost like I'm, I'm calling upon this, this mm-hmm. higher self that is helping me to see things. That, that for me is success, right? Mm-hmm. Because I'm able to, to, um, to continue to grow for, for, for me first, because so I could show up in, in a more enlightened way, in a more, in a bigger way, in, in a mm-hmm. more healed way for my, for my women. And, and hopefully that it can inspire them as well to, to do the work. And, and that way we, we could all together, mm-hmm. you know, create the consciousness in the world. Okay. Wow. That's so beautiful. <laughs> and, 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 and you're right. It's just, you know, it's a personal, uh, it's a personal experience for for each of us, you know, and uh, we define it in a different way. You have your own definition, I have my own definition. And uh, we come together because at the end of the day, we all connected. And that's, you know, by becoming to coming together and connecting together, we create a, a ripple effect and, and a bigger, you know, a bigger world. But, you know, just to continue on the, on the, on the success uh, idea, um, I mean, I, I, I assume that like everybody, you went through a very challenging moment at some point in your life. What do you think are the, you know, the, based on your experience, the roadblocks that you, you would say, okay, we, we, we need to watch out uh, through our journey, things that you, you think are very important for anybody to watch out or to do? Um, to be able to, uh, to, to make it through their own journey? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I would say uh, your own self. Mm-hmm. Um, I have it very clear, the answer to that one is about my own self and the thought that I have on how we rely so much on the mind that we're not connected to and we're not seeing things are around us. Mm-hmm. And I think that it's uh, one of the um, diseases of the century. It's, a, it's the fact that we so uh, focus on, on the thought and we think that the thought has, is driving us and it's who I am. And, um, and we're too much in the, in the mind. And I mm-hmm. think we need to... Uh, to need to experience different things. So, um, I mean, yes, I've have I've gone through so many challenges. Some of them challenges that I brought up on myself, and that mm-hmm. was like kind of fun. So, so let me get out of it. And some challenges that came to me, you know, an accident that, that I had when I was a kid, you know, that um, you know was fatal, almost fatal accident, or all the different uh, sexual harassment that I've had, you know, since I was a kid. So these are things that came to me. And, uh, but knowing what I know now, these are things that I needed to experience. Mm-hmm. So I could, uh, I could grow and I could learn whatever lessons I had to, grow, you know, to, to mm-hmm. learn from them. So um, from that perspective, that's why I say that one of the, the biggest things that we could, uh, we could do, it's, it's to heal and to take uh, this very seriously. 
-hmm. And uh, yeah, and you know, and you just said it is that, you know, any experience that we go through, it actually at the end of the day experience, it happened for a reason. And uh, the most important thing is to, um, to, to really, you know, learn from it and uh, improve along the way. Uh, so that's, uh, so how, how do you reconcile all of this? Because there's, you know, there's, you talked about the mind, you know, and the fact that uh, some of the experiences we bring to ourselves. And then, um, so how, 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 is, how do you explain this connection between what we have in our mind and uh, what actually materializes in our life? Uh, do you have an explanation on, on that? Yeah. Okay. Let me do my best to to see what mm -hmm. comes. Um, I think I think something is coming to my mind now, and that's the fact that we're not allowing somehow to feel all the emotions, right? Mm -hmm. And I'll give you an example of that. Um, um, I remember a few years ago, I had a very you know bad news coming to me related to a family member that that you know saddened me a lot. And I mm -hmm. remember that because I'm the positive person and I'm the optimist, optimistic person. So somehow I felt that I needed somehow to find optimism in that situation. Mm -hmm. And what I realized that the best thing that I could do back then it was to feel the emotion of sadness and and you know grief. And once I allowed that to be felt and as long as it, I had to feel it for, then you know it's it's uh, it brought a, a sense of peace to, to, to my life and I'm still dealing with that situation anyways, you know, still is present in my life. So, so that is one thing that was coming to my mind and, um, and I'm going to, what's coming to me as well is, is how, how are we connected as well to our own spirituality? Mm -hmm. Some people can connect to it through, through uh, their own religion. Some people don't need religion to connect to it. And uh, I am, I am, I'm a seeker and I'm a spiritual seeker. And, and for me, it's, it's, uh, it's imperative that um, it's part of my life. So mm -hmm. I see everything through that lens. Um, so it's not always in my mind. It's not always in my head. Sometimes, yes, because I still live in, mm -hmm. in, in, in this body and I need to show up and function in the world somehow, mm -hmm. right? And that is the ego that I need. Um, but sometimes it's, um, yeah, we, I think that is a missing link. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, and, yeah. and uh, yeah, so it's a missing link because, you know, we, we see that we, we mourn into a very, you know, um, materialistic type of world. And then you have this uh, fourth and strength revolution where we start to rely on robots and uh, all kind of different techniques or, uh, or machine. So what do you think, you know, we are adding and how do we, you know, how, how are we going, going to be able to keep this spirituality alive because we need it. And yet we're talking about artificial intelligence, we're talking about robot doing work from, from that, uh, you know, human are used to, to do. And so it's, it, it looks like it's all negating the, uh, the spirituality and then the yeah. connection that we, we have with the universe. So I don't know, what do you think about all of this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you so much. I've, I've never actually reflected, uh, especially with, with artificial intelligence. So, so this is the first time I'm reflecting like this. So let's see what comes up. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, as long as it's serving us, um, bring it on, why not? And mm -hmm. I think that if we were only to rely on either artificial intelligence or on, on, um, on our, our minds and our thoughts, and this is when we have an issue there. And I think that, may I say that, um, I feel that a lot of people are on the path of awakening mm -hmm. and it's people like you and I that have a responsibility to show up and, um, and show to people what there is to be shown as well. So I think for us is a never ending story mm -hmm. and it should never end. And I think is, is a big responsibility and through, um, our work and through the work of so many people that, that are doing similar type of work, it's, uh, we need to inspire and we need to mm -hmm. show people what, what, what there is to see, like, like my teacher says, one of my teachers says. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, I think spirituality for me is absolutely key. And if, um, if talking about earlier on, you asked me about the word success, I think that um, success without spirituality or having 
that for me it's uh, that, that has been my biggest success to mm -hmm. to have the experiences that helped me awaken in a way that I was asleep I was asleep for so many years Mireille, so many years right and and that was we're all that asleep was. I think <laughs> there's always a breakthrough moment that we we go through and uh, yeah, yes, and, uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> and some people you know it comes to them you know and they're on the, on the mountain mm -hmm. somewhere on the Himalaya and sometimes mm -hmm. we have to go from through some really tough situations to mm -hmm. to ask ourselves some powerful questions in my case was that mm -hmm. it was you know so many things that I considered to be you know it's what's going on here you know in a mm -hmm. very short space of time um, and I asked myself uh, an important question and that was the beginning mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and and yeah and I think for a lot of people it's it comes uh, very hard you know it's it's a very you know very challenging experience sometimes an accident sometimes something else and then it actually leads you to uh, you know to opening up to uh, to the the new consciousness and your spirituality and yeah. be able to use it um, uh, positively because that's that's what it's all about here um, absolutely absolutely and I, I i believe that the more hardcore situations you know um i i i'm i'm in a hurry i'm in a hurry to 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 graduate as soon as possible and mm -hmm. bring them on and um, I'm ready, you know, and of course what happens is that when you are in a situation, it's, mm -hmm. it, you know, it's, it's uncomfortable, it's ugly, it's dark. Mm -hmm. and, um, and sometimes we don't see the lesson there because we're so emotionally involved mm -hmm. in it. And I think that uh, I know that once we come out of it and ask ourselves some, some questions and like one of my, my, my dear friends, Linda, who is my, my soul sister and co-founder of Woman 5.0, you know, mm -hmm. first we need to feel, then comes the lesson, then comes the gratitude. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the, that, that's the sequence. Oh, okay. And how do you um, propagate this type of message? Because you, you, you work with a lot of leaders. And yes. uh, sometimes, you know, especially now, leadership is, is sometimes about it's black and white. It's really, you know, not um, looking at things sometimes in, 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 in a spiritual way. So how do you navigate to with people that you coach or people that you manage to yeah, uh, yes, yes. Yeah, to introduce this concept? Do you know what? I show up and, and thank you so much for this question. Like I remember many, um, uh, at the, you know, at the beginning of this beautiful new journey mm -hmm. or, or, you know, the rebirth of, mm -hmm. of myself, uh, I'd be very shy and I'll be, you know, I wouldn't talk about certain things, but actually I have been a seeker Mireille, almost, you know, all my life. You know, mm -hmm. I remember since I was a kid, I'd be so fascinated by, astronomy and the magnificence and the magnitude and, and the bigness of, of the world right mm -hmm. and I used to ask I am reading metaphysical metaphysical books philosoph philosophical books mm -hmm. um, you know I was hungry I'll hang out hang out with my grandmother and her friends more than my mm -hmm. own friends because I was hungry for wisdom mm -hmm. so so you know I've always been a seeker so mm -hmm. when I finally I had the courage and I had the, you know, yeah, the courage of mm -hmm. showing up. I, I just don't hold, I don't hold it. I don't hold it. Like two days ago, I came from Madrid and I was in the airport and I wanted to buy myself a new briefcase. And, um, and I was talking to the lady. I said, you know, I think this, brief, no, this briefcase is too small for me because mm -hmm. I normally have not only my laptop, I have my crystals in there, I have my oracle cards in there. I have, you know, all my, you know, things that I mm -hmm. use for coaching. <laughs> And she said to me, but uh, are you, are you uh, a meta in, in metaphysics? I said, I am not, but I use certain tools and I believe in, in, in this, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, by me not, and this is just a teeny tiny example, right? In mm -hmm. terms of, I, 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 don't, I don't hide it. I show up, I have my mm -hmm. oracle cards with me when I coach. And I, I, I tell the ladies, you know, it happened that when it comes to one-to-one -to -one work, and this is so exciting for me, that almost all my ladies are either ready for it mm -hmm. or they they need me to introduce them to it mm -hmm. so for me is at the beginning i was like is this a coincidence <laughs> yeah, these yeah, conversations yeah. what's happening here <laughs> so yeah. That's, yeah, yeah. This is what I, yeah i realized 
I realized mm-hmm. actually they're ready for it and 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 my my job is to is to help them mm-hmm. so, so that's, yeah. Course, yeah that's yeah. good so that's I really good because I, I think sometimes you know when we come with this exoteric spiritual things people are looking at you and say no. what is all of that I mean is he a witch or whatever or you know so it's uh, it's good that you know people understand that it's it's not all bad because I think we always associate it to bad thing based on the past or whatever happened. So they put this label and then straight away when you you know you show up with your crystal and say, Oh, that's probably a witch. <laughs> yes, she, she's doing witchcraft yeah. or something. <laughs> And I mean, right? I'm talking corporate people, you know. Yeah. I'm talking some of you know senior ladies. It's like, it's yeah, like, yeah. It's not, um, I mean, but mm-hmm. yeah, we. Re- I think so many people are ready for this, you know, mm-hmm. and and that's why it's exciting. That's why you know it's an honor for me to be doing what I do and to have been shown this path, mm-hmm. and 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 for me to keep working on myself. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think that's my, my, my job really is to help other people as well uh, mm-hmm. and help them um, in their awakening. And it, it, and it just shows that as human beings, we, 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 we're not one dimensional. I mean, we need to, there's a physical part, things that we see, but there's also the spiritual and other, you know, other dimension that we need to integrate to, to be fully fulfilled, yeah. you know. And, uh, and I think that's, the, the message that needs to be passed on to, uh, to yeah. everybody, especially people in leadership, so that they understand the impact that they can have, you know, on, uh, on the people that they lead. So that's, Absolutely. yeah. So, I mean, we, we're getting to the end of the show. So there's always a, a, a beautiful question that I like to ask uh, my, my guests is that, what do you expect from the future and what legacy do you want to be? Oh, what a beautiful question. Thank you so much. I think that that um, I'm going to use again somebody's wisdom. This is not my own wisdom, but sometimes sometimes when you hear it mm-hmm. and it resonates with you so deep at heart level, you know, it's your wisdom. And that is that I hope that my legacy is so big that I will never, I will never know about it. Mm-hmm. And that is through, um, and you know, a couple of days ago, I was speaking to one of my ladies and she was telling me, you know, I, was, I, I was sharing with somebody some of the teeth me and it helped her so much and I, and 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 your work is doing ripple effect and i said no it's now your work is that is doing ripple effect mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and um so through the teachings through the you know the work that i'm doing my, my hope is that uh, that will support other women and of course you know with the, with the some some projects that we out there that that will stay hopefully for, mm-hmm. for the long run but may i never know what my legacy is Oh, okay, so that's that's fantastic. So you want to leave a, such a big legacy that you you actually you know melt into it. <laughs> so that's good. So do you have a particular message for the audience? I mean, uh, it's you know it's your time. Uh, any yeah. event or any particular message that you want to pass to our audience? Yeah. Or yeah. Uh, you know, it's. Uh, it's it's uh, it's good to, for them so that they know that they you, there are people out there that they can connect with, and uh, we can actually help them in a different in a different way. So yeah. the floor is is yeah. yours. <laughs> Thank you so much, my lady. Thank you. So I think that my 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 message would be that. Um, um, if you are a people leader, especially if you have people that that um, they're looking up to you, please, please, please remember that leadership is not about you, but it has to start with you. And the way it starts with you is by you taking yourself very seriously as well when it comes to your own personal growth and your own your own healing. Because please let let me remind you again, let me repeat it again, that a, a disempowered and a healed woman it is it is a disempowered woman mm-hmm. and an unhealed woman. A leader is a disempowered woman leader so I think it's, it's a massive responsibility for us to take this very seriously so we can impact those people that are looking up to us in the most beautiful conscious and empowered ways that is oh. my message oh beautiful message so you know uh, to the audience I, I hope you, you you got this one is uh, you know leadership start with you so make sure that you look first you know inside yourself and then before you can lead over and be a role model before you can lead over. So it's been a beautiful hour uh, spent together. And uh, thanks for your time. Thanks for your inspiration. 
and for sharing your experience and your knowledge. And uh, I wish you all the best continuing your work and building up uh, your legacy, your big legacy that you want to leave. And uh, I really appreciate having you uh, on the Greatness Engineering Show um, today. It's my joy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, you. Uh, and see you and we'll stay connected anyway. Thanks. Bye.